Welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at a few more problems in section 6.3. The first example we have is uh, sine 2x cosine x plus cosine 2x sine x equals 1 half. So this certainly looks like quite a bit um, in this equation. Um, there's four different trig functions working here. But if we are kind of thinking back to the last chapter, there's some tools that we learned about in chapter five that could be really useful here. If we take a look at the structure of this left side, we have a sine of some angle we could maybe call A times cosine of another angle we'll maybe call B. And then we see those angles repeated again, but in the reverse order with cosine of A and sine of B. Now, if we're thinking about the sum and difference identities here, this is actually representing one of those. This happens to be the sum of sine, so sine of a plus b. So we can recall here that the sine of a plus b is equal to the sine of a cosine of b plus the cosine of a sine of b. And that's exactly what we have sitting here. So we can use this to our advantage here um, by using this identity. So overall, this whole left side we could write as a sine of a plus b equal to 1 half, and again, that a plus b happens to be 2x and x. So if a and b are 2x and x, this would be a sine of 2x plus x is 3x equal to 1 half. So this equation simplifies down to a single trig function of sine of 3x equals 1 half. So now we get to work with some more substitution. So let's take a look at working with that. We're going to try a substitution again with theta equaling 3x. And we can rewrite this as sine of theta equal to 1 half. OK, so now we can consider the problem where uh, we want a sine of some angle to be equal to 1 half. So let's consider that in a picture. We know that the sine of um, an angle theta is going to be positive in both the first and the third quadrant. And so here, the sine is going to be 1 half in the first quadrant, where we have a 30 degree angle. So that would be pi over 6 for that first angle. And we'd like to have that same angle represented on the right side, pi over 6 as a reference in the second quadrant. So we really have two angles sitting here for theta to begin with. So theta is equal to pi over 6. And then the second angle is going to give us a 5 pi over 6. That's the angle sitting in our second quadrant right here. 5 pi over 6. So now let's consider uh, making some coterminal angles to these given angles. Notice that we do have a 3x here, so it might be helpful to get um, three sets of solutions uh, when we work with our uh, coterminal angles here. So I'm going to be considering adding 2 pi to each of these initial angles, or we can consider adding, in this case, 12 pi over 6. That's the equivalent uh, improper fraction for 2 pi. And so we're going to start to add those. So the first step we're going to add to pi over 6 would be 13 pi over 6. And if I add it to 5 pi over 6, I'll add 5 and 12 give me 17 
pi over 6. I'll do another set of coterminal angles to these original two. And so if I add 12 pi over 6 again, 12 pi over 6 to 13 pi over 6 is going to be 25 pi over 6. And then add it to 17 pi over 6 would be 29 pi over 6. So these are my six angles, um, or this at least uh, six angles that come from uh, three rotations of our unit circle. If I consider the final solutions in terms of x, I know that x here is going to be equal to our theta divided by 3 from my substitution from the beginning. And so I can simply divide all of these solutions by 3 to get my six solutions that will be inside the range again from 0 to 2 pi. So let's take a look at those. Dividing each of these by 3, we'll have pi over 18, 5 pi over 18, 13 pi over 18, and so on. This will give us um, eight, uh, six solutions here, and we'll notice that that final solution is still within our range of 0 to 2 pi. So these will be the final six solutions that we'll represent for this equation. So watch out for these equations. Um, they might look really complicated, but they're actually just utilizing um, some of the identities that we've learned in our previous chapter. Let's take a look at the second example. We have a quadratic-like function here. So there's a number of things that we are going to have to work with in this equation. We'll notice that the angles in this equation are 3x. That's actually kind of helpful. Um, we can use another substitution for those angles. And so let's start with that step. We can use a substitution, again, using theta as our substitution variable. Call that 3x. And then we'll have 2 cosine squared of theta plus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. OK, now we have this uh, equation really looking like a quadratic equation since we have a squared term and then a single variable term with a sine um, and a constant as negative 1. But we'd like to consider maybe transitioning this into all sines or all cosines if we can. So the one bridge we have is we can work with the cosine squared. So if I consider this cosine squared, I can uh, substitute that um, with the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that 1 is equal to sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. So we can rearrange that equation to um, write cosine squared in terms of sine. So we could say that 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. So this will be my substitution, the direct equivalence uh, to cosine squared. So let's rewrite this. We have 2 times, in parentheses, 1 minus sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Okay. 
All right, so now we have some simplification to do, um, and then we'll try to rearrange. Again, Look, it looks like we're going to be in terms of a quadratic again, so I'm going to try to keep everything on one side of the equation. We'll have, distributing the 2, we'll have 2 minus 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 1 is equal to 0. And for this case, we notice that the sine squared here is a negative. And so most of the time when we're factoring a quadratic, um, which hopefully we can here, uh, we'd like to get that um, as a positive result. And so we're going to try to um, get that to the other side. We can flip everything to the other side um, by just negating each of the signs. So one way we can rewrite this initially is we do have constants 2 and negative 1. So we can say this is negative 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta and then plus 1 equals 0. And since it's kind of uh, tricky to factor with the negative out in the front, it's a little bit cleaner to work with just a positive 2 here. We can say that 0 if we flip it everything to the right side, and it might help to just write it on the other side of the equation, we can write this as 2 sine squared theta minus sine and then a minus 1 equal to 0. All right, so we do have a uh, quadratic. We don't need two zeros there. It is equal to 0. <laughs> And now let's consider if we can factor this in terms of sine. So the only way that we can get a 2 sine squared theta is if we have a factor of 2 sine theta and a second factor of sine theta. So that one is pretty set. If this happens to ha factor, those two will have to be our leading terms. We'll also notice that the constant term is negative 1. The only way we get a negative 1 is multiplying negative 1 and 1. So we'd like to place um, 1 and negative 1 in those second positions um, so that we get a cross term of negative sign. So we'll happen to do that with a plus 1 on the left and a minus 1 on the right. You consider the cross terms, we'll have multiplying those inner terms would be sine of x, and then the outer terms here would give us negative 2 sine of x. So if we add those two cross terms together, we'll get exactly negative sine theta. So this does factor um, perfectly, and again that's set equal to 0. So now let's consider um, working with the two factors of this quadratic. Let's start with the one on the left, 2 sine theta plus 1. We can consider rewriting this uh, set equal to 0. and solving this equation. If we rearrange for sine of theta, we'll find that sine of theta, subtracting 1 and dividing by 2, will give us negative 1 over 2. And then on the right side, if we set sine theta minus 1 equal to 0, we'll get sine of theta equal 1. So let's take a look at some initial solutions to both of these equations. First, we'll start with the one on the left. Where is our sine function going to be negative 1 half? Well, the sine function has a reference angle of pi over 3, again, when our um, sine is 1 half. And so 
the sine function will be negative in the third and the fourth quadrant. And so again, these angles here will be reference angle of pi over 6, reference angle of pi over 6. That's where our sine function is 1 half, or negative 1 half specifically. So we have two angles to start with, one in the third quadrant, one in the fourth. So this is the angles of theta equals 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And again, here, it's going to be helpful to find some coterminal angles um, for these. Since we do have a, a substitution in our problem, this was initially pi or, or theta equals 3 times x. So we'll try to get some coterminal angles here by adding here 2 pi. We want to add 2 pi to these angles or we can think about adding 12 pi over 6. That's the equivalent um, improper fraction for 2 pi. So let's list those out. We'll have a total of six solutions we'll look at. So if I add two, uh, 12 pi over 6 again, we'll have 19 pi over 6. And then the second one would be 23 pi over 6. And then we'll do it again with 12 pi over 6 again would give us 31 pi over 6 for the first grouping. And then add it to our last value will be a total of 35 pi over 6. So there's six solutions there for that one. The solution sets for sine of theta equals 1 is going to be a lot smaller. We're only going to get one solution each time. So if we considered the picture there, sine is going to be equal to 1 only at pi over 2, or 90 degrees. So we can consider um, the angles that would be solutions for this, the first three angles that would be solutions would be pi over 2. If I add again 4 pi over 2 or 2 pi, that's the same thing as adding 2 pi, finding their coterminal angle, we get 5 pi over 2 and 9 pi over 2. All right, so we have solutions for theta here, um, but we'd like to go out and solve for solutions for x. So let's bring it back and just consider now um, what's the relationship between theta and x. So theta was equal to 3 pi or 3x. And so my x is going to be theta divided by uh, 3. So it looks like there's going to be um, nine solutions that we're going to have, and we just need to divide each of these theta solutions, and I'll box these for the moment, each of these theta solutions by three. So I'll start with the theta solutions here on the left, and we'll write these out. So starting with 7 pi over 6, this will become 7 pi over 18, we'll have 11 pi over 18, 19 pi over 18, 23 pi over 18, we'll have 31 pi over 18, and 35 pi over 18. That's the initial six solutions on the left. 
Now we'll turn our attention to the right side here. Pi over 2 will become pi over 6. We'll have 5 pi over 6. And then finally, we'll have uh, 3 pi over 2 for the last solution. So here we'll have 9 solutions for x. 9 solutions. And that would be the completion for, for that problem. One more uh, problem we'll take a look at is uh, the tangent squared 2x equals 3. So let's consider again a angle substitution here to start and then we'll um, walk through the process of solving this one. Again we'll think about a theta is equal to 2x and so we'll have tangent squared theta equals 3. If I have tangent squared theta equal to 3 I could consider taking a square root to find the value of tangent. So here with the square root, we can say that tangent of theta itself is equal to plus or minus the root of 3. So this gives us really two avenues to um, get solutions for theta, either at positive root of 3 and, or negative root of 3. So let's start with just positive root of 3. Um, what's the really the reference angle in the first quadrant that gives us tangent of theta equals square root of 3? Well, this would come when theta is equal to pi over 3, or 60 degrees. So this would be our reference angle if we drew out a graph. The places where we would find solutions here would be at pi over 6, or pi over, uh, pi over 3. <clears throat> so pi over 3 would be our first solution. And then we'd have really uh, two solutions where tangent is positive. Remember, all students take calculus. So the two places where tangent is positive would be here and then here. Again, a pi over 3 is our reference. And then we'll get two solutions where the tangent is negative, and that would come at, again, the reference of <clears throat> pi over 3, and another reference of pi over 3. So this is where tangent theta equals negative root of 3. So there's four angles there in the initial unit circle that will give us solutions for theta. So let's list those. Theta first will be pi over 3. Second will be 2 pi over 3. The third quadrant will be 4 pi over 3. And then the last one will be 5 pi over 3. So four solutions in the initial unit circle. Since we have a double angle um, here for theta, it'd be helpful to get a second set of solutions um, in a second rotation of our unit circle. And so we'll just find a coterminal angle to each of those four by adding 2 pi. If we end up adding 2 pi to each of these initial four angles, we will have 7 pi over 6, or 7 pi over 3. This is the same as adding 6 pi over 3. We will have um, 8 pi over 3. 
10 pi over 3. And then finally, 11 pi over 3. So we have here sitting eight different solutions for theta. To get to x, um, the last thing we need to do is just divide again each of these solutions by 2. Since we have theta equals 2x, that means x is equal to theta divided by 2. <clears throat> so we'll divide each of these eight solutions by 2. We'll take them in order pi over 6, pi over 3, 8 pi over 3, uh, 8 pi over 6, excuse me, 4 pi over 6, there we go, divide by three, uh, 2 again, we'll get 5 pi over 6, and then we'll have 7 pi over 6, 4 pi over 3, We'll have 5 pi over 3, and then we'll get to 11 pi over 6. So each of these eight solutions will give us a valid solution, again, within 0 to 2 pi. And so this is our final solution set for x. So remember, when we take a square root, um, we will have two solution sets, one for the plus version of the, unit, or the square root and one for the minus. So make sure that we include those um, as we're working with our solution set. So I hope this was a helpful video for the trigonometric functions. I look forward to seeing it in the next video.